Hey there, I hope to find you well. Today I want to make a more relaxed video. I'm recording this video with several months delay. It was to be released around August 2022, I think. Then on October and I finally got the time to record it now. Uh, in the end of February 2023. After a lot of requests, I brought back my DSO 2T, 2D10 for a last and final test. Really, I'm done with it. No more testing. I can even do some videos showing how to hack, uh, to hack it or to upgrade the model or use it in some more videos for waveform analysis. But this will be the last set of tests I will do with it. I bought this oscilloscope on 2022. And for making that possible, I have to thank you, one of my awesome viewers and maybe one of the channel supporters that through the affiliate access links on the screen that you can use before shopping on AliExpress or Amazon and without any extra costs to you, allow me to receive a very small affiliate commission that helps me to buy equipment like this oscilloscope to review. Again, thank you for your support. So without further ado, let's do this. In this video, I will address the following topics. First, low voltage testing using my millivolt voltage reference board, 2.5 to 10 volts voltage testing and bandwidth testing up to 100 megahertz. And for testing the millivolt, I have here the board I made on PCBWay. As you know, PCBWay is the channel sponsor. Now it's the time to talk about this video sponsor, PCBWay. I always use PCBWay for creating my boards with a professional factory quality, as you saw in my millivolt voltage reference board. It is very cheap to manufacture your PCBs on PCBWay. You can manufacture 10 PCBs for only 5 bucks. How awesome is this? And it is pretty easy also. Just insert here the PCB dimensions and you'll have an instant code. So, when you want a PCB, visit PCBWay to get your code, and if it is your first time ordering from PCBWay, you can use our access link for a $5 credit, and don't forget, they also have component assembly service, a 3D printing service, and much more. Okay, so I have everything set up to start testing. Let's power on channel 1. In measure, I will activate the DVM for channel 1 also. Okay, very nice. And I must say that we are starting to have some good news. Uh, for this, let me do an auto set again, just to check. Yeah. So in here we have 11.6.5 volts. It's not bad, the average is 1 to 12, and where is the RMS? Uh, RMS 1 to 12 too. So I must say that this, this is very near the value of the board. The value of the board is around 10 millivolts, 10.5 millivolts. And yeah, this is a very nice value for that. So let's move on to 25 millivolts. 25 it's one major digit out. Yeah, even so, this is not a multimeter, so I think we are okay with these values. Okay, so now let's move it to 51 millivolts. Yeah, okay, seems nice. In here, in average and RMS, it's also 51 millivolts. Let's move it to 100. Well, what happened here? Okay, let's do an auto. I don't know what is happening with the voltmeter, but on average, it's pretty accurate. It says 100 millivolts in here. And also in RMS, I don't know what's happening here with the voltimeter. Let's see if I can change. No, not this uh, voltimeter. If I can change here. 
DC again. Hmm. I don't know what to say because it's detecting correctly in here. Let's move on to 250 millivolts. Still, uh, let's auto set. Uh, now it's working. I don't know what happened with the 100 millivolts. Well, it's a bit off, but I changed this to DC instead of DC RMS. Let's change that back. Okay. Yeah. Let's do auto set again. And yeah, so in in here is detecting 292 millivolts and that's not the value that the board outputs it's about 248 millivolts but okay let me connect again and see if everything is okay auto set yeah nothing change let's move on to 500 millivolts auto set again okay 587 okay pretty near in here we have 504 3 and this one it's much more near the values it's about uh, yeah this one it's about 501 uh, i think let's move this to one volt auto set again okay one volt zero four it's about the average and also the RMS. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, two and point five volts. Two point five fifty eight. This I think it's about two point forty eight, forty nine uh, volts that the the board is outputting. But yeah, even so, it's near. Again, don't forget this is not a multimeter, but it should be accurate also. And for last, the 5 volts on this board. And these 5 volts is always tricky. But it's detecting 5.08 volts. And also here in the RMS and average. So I think this is much more accurate than the tests I've done before. I'm pretty satisfied with, with these results, to be honest. Yeah, pretty satisfied, much more near than the previous tests. For now, I will test with my voltage reference boards, 2.5 volts, 5 volts, 7.5 and 10 volts. Let's see what values do we get there. So I have everything already set up to use my voltage reference board to test the oscilloscope. Let's start by powering it up, okay, and moving this to 2.5 volts. So my, let's do an auto set. It's always better to do an auto set, always. So the oscilloscope detects 2.60, well, 2.6, yeah. And my siglant detects 2.4987, so it's pretty near 2.5 volts in here we are a bit over 10 millivolts over but okay we have here 2.57 in rms and average so yeah we are a bit over not much uh, nothing nothing really concerning but yeah okay let's move on to 5 volts let's do it auto again we detect here 5.13 and my siglant detects 5.0012 so it's pretty much 5 volts uh, basically and we have here 13 millivolts more than we have on the siglant and on average and RMS we have about 5.1, 5.12, 11, 12 so it's basically the, the what we have in there. Let's move on to 7.5 volts. 7.5 auto in here. So we detect here in the voltmeter 
7.64 and on Siglent we have 7.498 so it's basically 7.5 pretty near the value of the reference board this one is still a bit over and finally 10 volts let me press here and do it auto again in 10 volts we have 10.4 and my siglent has exactly 10 volts so pretty good that one this one is a bit over but all the values has been a little over the the reference value i have to review my videos but i think that these values are pretty near the the, the reference values uh, and much better than the previous tests I made. I think that this this one, uh, this latest upgrade, really helped to to have more accurate values. What I'm going to do now is to connect this to my Owen XDG2100, and let's test this up to 100 megahertz to see how it handles. Okay, so on the screen you should have already my uh, Owen XTG2100 with a 1 MHz signal, 1 volt VPP and also the screen of the oh, Hantec DSO2D10. In here we have the peak-to-peak -peak and frequency statistics. Right now is detecting an average of 999.97 kilohertz. It's basically one megahertz. It's here. Uh, but what is well curious for me is the average of peak to peak. It's 820, and it says it's currently one volt. And this is quite curious. We have 800 millivolts average for uh, 1 megahertz frequency. Uh, I wonder how this will be if we increase the, vo the frequency. I will take this by steps up to 25 megahertz. Let's do an auto set and see what we get in here. So at 25 megahertz we all see, already see some jitter in the waveform, nothing special. It's totally normal. And we have here current 930 millivolts uh, peak to peak for a 25 megahertz voltage. Again, the average is 838. So, yeah, let's see what we have here. So this value should be all, always over 740 if the bandwidth is really 100 megahertz. Let's move this to 50 megahertz. Okay. So, another auto set just in case. Okay. In 50 megahertz, as you can see, the bandwidth, uh, sorry, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage dropped to 670, 80 millivolts. So this should be over 714, 16, I think, something around that. But the average is again at 834. Mm. And we have a 50 megahertz bandwidth. At 50 megahertz, this is already strange. Let me see at 75, it's three quarters of the band total bandwidth that should be supported. Let me take this again to the auto set. At 75 megahertz, it's detected here, we have a peak to peak of 640, 50 millivolts. Again, the average is at 824 uh, and this brings some suspicions to me i don't know and let's take this to 100 megahertz 
okay auto set and on 100 megahertz and this is also pretty weird we have a current of one volt over one volt and the max 1.25 okay but the average is still 126 so i don't know i don't know this says 100 megahertz the line is pretty jittery but if you use average uh, on acquire i think it will stabilize but yeah this is uh, weird i will do something i will change the the values manually okay let's start decreasing i'm around 92 right now and let's do auto set we have 890 millivolts okay let's go below 90 88 okay let's move this to i don't know 76 seems good yeah and what i think is curious is that you have lower values with lower bandwidth that you have uh, that you have with one mega uh, 100 megahertz so mm, it seems something fishy here i don't know guys just comment to to see because probably you guys may know something that i don't know and but this seems fishy because at 76 megahertz you have a, a, a lower peak to peak that at 100 mm, i don't know it seems that something is being uh, hammered here so we have the, the values seems to be worked somehow uh, yeah let's take this to 60 something yeah a 63 uh, megahertz let's do an auto set at 63 megahertz we still have 644 uh, millivolts and this average is still uh, on the same place always i don't know maybe this is okay maybe not let's move on i show you the info you decide to wrap this up in my opinion this oscilloscope still is a good choice to buy Protocol decoder, function generator, math functions, FFT, a lot packed for the price. This last firmware from November 2022 seemed to improve a lot the voltage measurements, so I'm pretty happy with these last changes. For me, this is still a winner option, considering everything you get and for the price, but let me know what you think on the comments. As always, if you are on the market for a uh, oscilloscope, this is my opinion, and with this last firmware, it is a good choice. And please remember that you have the affiliate link to buy this device on the description of this video, or you can also use the affiliate access links here on the screen. Again, thank you for your help, it's really appreciated. If you learned something and this video was useful to you, please smack that like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that bell to activate all notifications and be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. That's it for today, I hope to see you in my next video, until then, stay safe, cheers!